This week on the Trend Out Loud podcast. Summer Walker was on a podcast with JT. She's talking about her son. If she ever catches her son cheating, she's going to snitch on her son and tell her son's girlfriend that he cheated, which is wild. What up? It's your boy Trend Out Loud. I am back with another episode. Let's go. Um, all right. What are we talking about today? Um, okay, first thing in the news today, um, yo, let's start out with Montreal, yo. Adam Silver, who is the chairman of the NBA, announced yesterday that Montreal might be on the short list for potential NBA teams, which is super dope. Um, for those of you guys who remember, I mean, yo, we haven't had a sports team other than the Canadians in so long. I mean... I remember like the Expos and, um, actually, sorry, 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 sorry. Whoa. Let me not get my Montreal card taken away from me. Shout out to Alouettes. They're actually in the Grey Cup. But what I mean by that is it's a Canadian league. So of course, a Canadian league, we're going to have a Montreal team. But for like a national league or an American league, we don't have that many Canadian teams. If I'm not mistaken, the Montreal Canadiens are the only ones. So that's what I mean where it's like, yo, we, you know, we used to be, uh, you know, we used to have the Expos um, and we, uh, shoot, that's really about it. Actually, we've only had the Expos um, and we managed to lose that. So anyways, it'd be super exciting to have an NBA team, to have all these NBA stars come through Montreal. It would be super dope for the economy. It'd be super dope for downtown. Um, that would be amazing, man. And it would just be good just for um, basketball in general. Like a lot of people forget basketball was invented in Montreal. It was invented at McGill University. I actually think it's a disservice. We should automatically, by default, have an NBA team and not have to pay any dues or anything. Like, yo, NBA, yo, we gave you that game, America. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, we gave you that. So we should have a Montreal team here. And any dues or anything that we have to pay or whatever expenses should be paid by the NBA uh, so that we could have a team here. Anyways, I'm joking. I know that that's never going to happen, but it is a disservice to Montreal, to Canada, that the province or the area, the city that gave you um, the game does not have a team. So that would be super dope um, if we were to get a team. Elon Musk, back in the news. Um, for you Tesla fans, Tesla is finally um, rolling out their Cybertruck, which I think is super dope. Like, I'm not a big Tesla guy. It's I'm not really like I have no problem with um, uh, what you call them, uh, electric cars. I'm not a big fan of it, but I don't have a problem with it. I just th there's no like model Teslas that has really like stood out to me where I'm like, yo, I have to get it. But this Cybertruck is so sick. It's super sick. Like, other than the Rolls Royce truck, like after the Rolls Royce truck, yeah, I would put the Cyber Truck. Like, yeah, yeah, that's that dope. It, I mean, it could even beat the Rolls Royce truck. The Rolls Royce truck is my favorite truck, but the Cyber Truck is so dope. It looks so futuristic. It looks really sick. Um, I don't know really much about it. I don't know what the capabilities are and what it could do in their off roading. Like, I don't know if it. You know, if it could do what a G-Wagon can do or what a Range Rover can do, but I do know that it looks sick. Um, anyways, so sorry, I'm getting off track here for a second. So Elon Musk was in the news because he's um, him and Tesla. If you when you get your Cybertruck de de um, delivered to you. You will not be able to sell it for one year till you get, sorry, I don't know what is wrong, why I cannot talk today. You cannot sell your Cybertruck till one year after ownership. So if you get your truck delivered this November, you can't sell it till next November. Obviously, they're doing that to kind of, you know, not have the resale market blow up and obviously have people run and, and buy it at Tesla. And a lot of people are, are, are mad at him for it, but this is not a super uncommon thing. When I went to buy um, my Range Rover, uh, they told me that there are a lot of people come buy the Range Rovers and then sell them for 
you know, double the price or like an extra hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars overseas. So they made me lease my Range Rover when I was fully ready and capable to buy it. But you're like, nah, because you're a new customer, because we don't know you, um, you have to lease it for a year. Because if you lease it, they still own it, and then you can't sell it, obviously. So it was like a kind of trick thing that they did. So I don't know why Tesla doesn't just do something like that, where they're like all new trucks have to be leased, meaning that Tesla still owns it. And then after a year, like what I did, you go and you buy your Range Rover. And now I own my Range Rover. And then after a year, I don't understand this whole penalty. And the penalty of $50,000, the resale value is going to be way more than $50,000. So if I was, if I had one, I would buy it, sell it for $200,000 more than I paid for it. And then just pay Tesla the $50,000. Or maybe now that I think about it, Maybe that's Tesla's way of just getting more money. Maybe they don't care if you sell it. And it's their way to say, yo, if you're going to be making money on a secondary market, we want our piece. Oh, that's what he's doing. Okay. Elon is smart. It's dirty because you should be really thinking about, you know, keeping the, sh the car off the resale market. That would be even better. But, yo, you know, Elon is all about his money, man. All right. Staying with money. Um, there was an article I read, I think it was Earn Your Leisure, um, that um, Rolex watches and high-end watches are facing a new low um, in, uh, in the past two years. Um, they reached their height in, I think, in COVID, and now after two years, um, they've reached their, their lowest resale value, which I kind of found interesting um, that... You know, I just, you know, me coming from, you know, the sneaker industry, collectibles and everything like on StockX and go to whatever. And there was such a huge craze for the past. Oh, dude, I wouldn't even I mean, yes, well, we all know that it, it heightened in COVID. But for the past seven to five years, I feel like collectibles have been the thing and sneakers being probably the thing that leads the collectibles the most, probably because it's the most affordable collectible. I mean. It's kind of hard to collect Rolexes because they're you know hundred thousand dollars or more each or some probably up to a million dollars. But I just found it interesting that this whole collectible market is is going down, and I don't know if it is directly tied to the economy. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Like. I feel like, of course, it had to, it has to be somewhat tied, but I don't know if it's a direct, direct correlation. Like when the economy is back booming, then everyone is going to just go back into collectibles. I think what it is, is that I think people are just tired of paying over retail value for something. And people are realizing like, yo, why am I buying this Rolex that this guy bought for $200,000 and now he's selling it for $400,000? or 500,000 just because they only made 50 of this edition or whatever the, the the limit was. That's how these companies make money, right? They make it in a limited edition and then whoever gets it gets it and then you resell it and it, it, it creates a, this whole secondary market. I think people are just getting wiser and being like, yo, why am I spending all of this extra money for something that's limited? Who cares if they made 50 of it? Um, or if they made 500 of it. So I think that's maybe what it is of like that kind of braggadocious, like I have one of 50, maybe that's kind of cooling down. Of course, it's always going to be around in some sort, in some sort of capacity, but you know, it's not going to be, I think it got to the point where everybody wanted everything that was collectible and everything that was limited. And if you didn't have every single thing on you that was limited, like you weren't cool, like it's all right to wear a pair of jeans or an outfit. Of course, you don't want an outfit that the next exact guy is wearing, but you know what I'm saying, right? On to some music. Um, um, Andre 3000 from Outkast is putting out an album. I love Outkast, big fan of Outkast. Um, you know, Big Boy and Andre are always doing forward thinking things in the music industry, but I thought this was weird. Um, Andre 3000 is releasing an album, a barless album. Like he's not rapping. It's an, from what we understand, it's an instrumental, but it's like, yo, if he's playing instruments, like, I don't know, Carlos Santana, uh, Car Carlos Santana, I think he's put out an instrumental, 
But I would just, I find that how is a rapper put out an instrumental barless album? I have no idea. But I mean, yo, it's, it's 103,000. He never does anything that's whack. This guy is a full legend in the whack, in the rap game, in the whack game, <laughs> in the rap game. So I would be interested to listen to whatever he's putting it up, putting out. But anyways, I wanted to just highlight that for you outcast fans or you hip hop heads out there. Andre 3000 is coming out with a solo instrumental album. Sticking with music, um, uh, BB Rexa, in um, pure honesty, I have no clue who that is, but I don't know. I think she's in the music industry or something. Um, anyways, BB Rexa, sorry, BB. I'm sure you don't know who I am either, all right? And I'm trying out loud. It's a trying out loud podcast. Um, uh, anyway, so BB Rexa was on when, on a podcast where she was on a show and she was saying something about Nicki Minaj and Cardi B and she was saying that she prefers Nicki over Cardi B and now it started this whole like discussion about, you know, Nicki writes her own raps and everybody loves Cardi for her personality, but if you're talking about musical artists, you got to put Nicki up there and she got a lot of backlash saying that like she's not supporting women and they're putting women against each other. What, pitting women against each other, which is ridiculous because she's just literally talking about which artist she likes more and the reason why. Like, have we gotten so, um, so, uh, so soft as a society that some, but a woman can't say which women, woman she prefers and the reasons why, like, this is crazy. Like you could say what actor you prefer or you, you know, if you pit like Denzel Washington against Al Pacino, like it's not gonna be like, yo, Trent said Denzel was better than Al Pacino. This guy's hating on men. Like, what's going on? Like, that is just crazy to me. Um, but having said that, um, first of all, I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on it. But first of all, I love both of them. <laughs> just want to put that out there. Um, um, I love Cardi as a person more i feel like the person who we know like i don't know nikki i don't know cardi but from the the persona that they give us i think personality wise i maybe want to hang out with cardi more you know what i'm saying like she seems like she is fun and she's you know a little bit more down to earth whereas nikki you know nikki seems like she could be cold and she might cut you if you rub her the wrong way, rub her the wrong way. Actually, now that I think about it, Cardi <laughs> seems pretty cold, too. Anyways, I don't know. I would just, if I had a choice to hang out with one, I'm probably going to want to choose Cardi to hang out with her. But having said that, musically, yo, I feel like when all is said and done, yo, Nikki is going to go down like top 10 and not top 10 females, like top 10 rappers of all time like lyrically delivery flow like cadences like just just yo she's yo nikki is a full artist not saying cardi's not an artist um but like and i'm not even so much talking about that cardi b because this was um uh, bb's point is that cardi doesn't write and nikki but nikki writes and i know in hip-hop it's all about you know, your penmanship and your pen and this and telling your truth and telling your story, whatever, blah, blah, which is full crap because there's so many of these artists who don't write. And even the artists that you feel and you think do write, trust me, there's people writing for them. And even if you have, if you do write and your pen game is strong, trust me, I've been in the music, I was in the music industry for seven, eight, close to 10 years. You're in a studio. People are always going to give you an idea or a hook or this or whatever. Like for somebody to be like, yo, I write every word that I rap. Like that's BS, man. Um, but, um, yeah, so it doesn't bother me that, that Cardi, um, is, is not like, oh, like that she doesn't write her own rhymes. But even if you take out the writing aspect, I still feel like, I don't know, man, just lyrically delivery, like, just, I feel like if I had a song to write or somebody to guide me on a song, I would choose, um, I would choose Nikki. She's, I feel like she's just more of a complete rapper. Um, I think the only, like musically, I think the only time where Cardi would beat Nikki is like 
that kind of like aggressive, confident flow. Like every it's every Cardi song, like she's like she, you could feel, you know, like even if it's a even if it's a um like a, a club song or a more dancey song, like she's always coming like hard. You know what I mean? Like so, but I feel like in the hardness, Cardi has her beat, but just all around uh Nikki. Anyways, geez, I'm rambling about this. Like I could get really um passionate with my music. Anyways, um, anyways, I thought that was crazy that she got backlash for for talking about the artist she likes. I'm I, are you guys gonna give me backlash as I just talk for five minutes about you know my artists and, and why I like them. Summer Walker, this is funny. This is hilarious. Summer Walker was on a podcast with JT. Um, and they were talking about um, cheating and talking about, um, uh, I should try to find a clip. Anyways, she's talking about her son. And if her son, um, if she ever catches her son cheating, she's going to snitch on her son and tell her son's girlfriend that he cheated, which is wild. <laughs> like, yo, I understand scolding your son. I understand talking to him, I understand telling him how wrong cheating is, and blah, 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 blah. And of course, coming from a female perspective, you understand how your son's girlfriend is going to feel. So that's probably why Summer Walker was like, yo, I'm, I'm telling her. But yo, that's your son. Like, you can't be snitching on your son for, for cheating. I mean, I would think anything short of a crime, and depending on what the crime is, Yo, that's you got to protect your kid at all costs, man. Yo, even even if it is cheating, that's crazy. That's no, nah, man. I'm I'm I no no. My kid, I'm riding and I'm dying for that, man. Like you're cheating, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that it's you know you shouldn't do it. Yo, it's not good. Be honest, because I really hate cheaters. Like I'm I'm on the side of yo. Be honest. Don't be in a relationship. That's why for me. I've been single forever. Like, yo, I like being free. I like doing my own thing. I'm not, I don't believe in this whole running around and, yo, telling, yo, I love you, baby. And you're this, the one for me. And yo, da, da, da. And t da nah, dog. No, no. I, yo, I'm a full dating guy. I'll date multiple women and people are very open. I mean, I talk about this openly in my book, How Sneakers Saved My Life, polyamorous chapter, um, available now on Amazon. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, so I'm fully against, uh, cheating from men and from women, but if my child is, is cheating, I'm going to ride or die. I'm not telling, um, on my, on my child. So let me know in the comment section, what you would do. Would you ride or die for your, um, your, 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 your child? That's, that's crazy. Also, let me know, uh, in the comment section, uh, Nikki or Cardi B. Uh, if you did listen to Andre 3000's album, let me know what you thought about it. Um, shoot, let me know if you like uh, the Tesla truck. And uh, I don't know if you're from the Montreal area or you're from the, the you're from, can I, if you're from the Canadian, if you're Canadian, let me know if you're excited about Montreal getting a basketball team. We'll be our second team. Shout out to the Raptors. It's your boy, Trent Out Loud. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn Out Loud. Peace! Go to signupexpert.com forward slash Trent. And then once you sign up for all betting apps and get all your bonuses and get all your rewards, go to your app store and download BetStamp and use promo code TOL.